Hey everybody, Jessie here from jessiebanks.com and welcome back to another video. So for today's video I have ordered the Pink Fresh Studio liquid watercolors. So this comes with 12 colors. I ordered the entire set. Um, I do believe it was like 10% off or something if you ordered the complete set. Um, they came super well packaged, wrapped in bubble wrap inside of a box, and then inside of here I have pulled it out already. I haven't used them at all, but there was a piece of brown paper over there just to make sure that these didn't bounce around at all. Um, <clears throat> the stickers could get on the front. Now, I, it doesn't really bother me because they aren't going to stay in this box, but I always think it's hilarious when stickers aren't put on straight, I don't know, personal, personal opinions. So when you open up the box, they have stuck a piece of cardboard in between them, as well as, like I said, the brown paper on top to stop these from clanging together because they are glass bottles. So I'm just going to pull all of these out. I really like the bottles. I think they're a super fun shape. Um, I have tons of watercolors. I didn't need these, but I needed these, if that makes any sense. So we've got, this is sky blue. Um, this one is key lime. Lavender. I really like like the rectangular square shaped bottles. Something different and fun. This one is called licorice. This one is called sunshine. This one is called Sapphire. Um, oops, sorry about that. This one is Emerald City. I'm making a ton of noise. You're welcome. I apologize. This one is Bubblegum. This one is Clementine. Espresso. Mmm, coffee. <laughs> Aquamarine and candied apples. So those are the 12 colors that come in the set. I do have a piece or a ceramic plate here. I use this for lots of my watercoloring. I pick them up at Dollarama here in Canada. They're like three dollars or something like that. Super cheap. If I break them, I'm not heartbroken, etc, etc. So I'm going to just kind of put this up at the top here and I will be back with some watercolor paper and we'll start by swatching all of these out. Alright, so I got my plate and I got a piece of Arches watercolor paper here. This is a Pentel. This is the small tip water brush just for doing the swatches and I've given all of our colors a shake here. So I'm just going to start by... I like that these are child safety so you have to push down and turn in order to get the color out. Um, the droppers seem to work well. I've had some liquid watercolors where the droppers don't work very well. So what I'm going to do is just take a little bit in there. And I'm just going to put like a drop down on our, <clears throat> pardon me, on our plate here. Um, I'll put out the pink. So you gotta push down and turn. Some of them are a little tricky. I do like that my eight year old cat won't be able to get into these. Or me, apparently. Yeah, there we go. So I'm just going to put down red, pink, red. And I'm just putting like a drop down. These will be highly concentrated because they are liquid watercolors. Um, so you don't need a ton, especially right now while we're just swatching and playing. I will get into coloring probably some flowers because I tend to do florals with watercolors. Um, I do find if you get a tricky one, if you set it on your table and push down, then they become very easy to open. So that's something to note there. Green, that's the key lime. And Emerald City. We'll start with these six. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my water brush. Um, it's already wet. I'm going to dip it into the color and start at the top and then just blend it out. So that is highly pigmented, and then it'll fade out into the lighter colors, just like that. I enjoy having swatches of all of my colors just because it helps me either pick straight colors or um, wear them down, like how to mix and what, I, what kind of a tone I'm looking for if they're cooler light or cooler warmer colors, etc., things of that nature. Um, I also just like being able to see what I have because I have a ridiculous amount of watercolors. 
I like that this orange fades into more of a golden yellow color, which gives you tons of options. I would probably use it in place of like a quinacridone gold, um, which is one of my all-time favorite colors to use. That one was called Clementine. This one is Sunshine. So we're just fading those out. Super vivid, super vibrant colors. Um, exactly what I'd expect out of some out of liquid watercolors, which is always really really nice. I do like that they are pigment based and not dye based. They do say they conform to ASTM standards, um, but I haven't found any light fast information or anything like that as of yet. I will take a boo peek again once I finish filming this section and before we get into the coloring before I get into coloring something. And that way if I am mistaken and I just haven't have missed it or it's been updated since I last looked, I can let you guys know what they say. Um, something like this, I will probably take another card and make another list of or another um, sheet of samples on it and tape out half and put them in my kitchen window here, well dining room window. Um, my dining room faces it gets on all day at the front of my house, so I'll put them in the window with half of it taped over black and leave them sit for a few weeks and then we can do, I'll post it over on my Instagram. The link to that will be in the description box below to see how much, if at all, these colors faded while they were sitting there in the window. I kind of, when I can't find any information, I like to do that just as my own personal test. I know most of us are using these for cards and crafting and that's not the end of the world, but I if I'm investing my hard-earned money, because I work very, very hard for everything I have. Um, those of you that have followed me for a while know I'm a painter. I paint residential and commercial property. But um, I like to, if I'm investing in something that I am paying basically the price of artist grade for, I would really like to have to know that it's going to last. So this one is Aquamarine, which will probably be one of my favorite colors. See, this is why I like to do swatches. Now that's a beautiful color, but based upon what I see on the on the actual bottle, it's a lot greener. So that's why it's really nice to do to do your color charts. This is a very faint color. Um, even at full strength, it's very, very light, which isn't my favorite thing because I can always water them down and lighten colors myself, but that one is the sky blue. So I, I did expect it to be a faint color. That is gorgeous. That is absolutely stunning. I love the depth in that color. I did put a little too much water in that red. You can see how it's kind of running back. That one was the sapphire. Now we're going to do the lavender. Which I'm impressed with how dark this is to start with. Like how deep the color gets. Because usually when you get a lavender, right about here is like your darkest tone. So I like that it'll go, it goes a lot darker than I anticipated it going. Makes me very happy. That's beautiful. That's super pretty. Now espresso. I know browns aren't everybody's favorite color to have. I love them. They are great for mixing skin tones and doing trees and things of that nature. That one definitely has a red undertone. I think they did a very, very good job at choosing um, the color palette and making sure they gave, they supplied enough um, different, different colors and mixing capabilities. Like you definitely have a rainbow here and you can paint anything you want to paint out of this palette. And it also gives them lots of room to expand without feeling like they left a bunch of stuff out. So I'm really, I'm really happy with the way that that all comes together and just the choice of colors in large. So I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to double check about color, light fast ratings and pick out a stamp set and we'll be right back. 
Okay, so I'm back and we're on to the coloring portion. I'm using this stamp set here from Power Poppy. It is called the Poppy XL stamp set. I will have a link to it in the Power Poppy store down in the description box below. And I've stamped it out on some Arches 140 pound hot press watercolor paper. So this is a really smooth watercolor paper. It doesn't have a lot of texture to it. I really like it for doing florals and things of that nature. And then I have all of our watercolors off to the side here. So that's the same palette or the same plate that I had dropped those couple spots on just for doing our swatches and stuff previously. Some of them have dried, they'll re-wet and I'll add more color to them as needed and stuff like that. And we're just going to start by filling in a little bit of blue into the background just to give me something in the back so I'm not basing my colors against stark white. I do go in and deepen that up a little bit later on in the video and add another blue to it and stuff. But we're starting there for now and just slowly blending that out. I am just using an aqua brush here. I do personally prefer to paint with a uh, these are real paintbrushes, but a standard watercolor paintbrush where your water source is separate from your paintbrush. But I had grabbed one of these to do this video and I really enjoyed it. It worked well. I didn't have too much water or anything of that nature. So it worked for its purpose and I did like it. Surprisingly, these are the Pentel ones. So now I'm going through and I'm taking that bubblegum pink and I'm starting with that color just to lay in our shadows and start putting some color down onto this flower. You won't see a lot of the pink in the end because I will go over it with red and purple, but we'll, we'll start with it and laying it down. I'm just following the artist on lines. So where the petal tucks underneath of other petals is going to be slightly darker. And then if you look at all of the petals on it, they have folds and things where Marcella has drawn some lines. So you know that there's a fold or a crease in the flower petals. And I am just adding some darker color in there as well. So what I'm going to do is, I know this is sped up already, but this video is heck long. Like, if you guys stick throughout this video, I give you credit because it's like half an hour long. That's a long time to listen to me talk, especially me talk. Especially about one flower that's going to take this long. Anyway, I'm babbling now. So I looked up to see if I could find any of the light fast information on these watercolors. I couldn't find any. I know that they say they conform to the ASTM standard of watercolor, but without any actual light fast um, ratings or any idea of how they last, um, what I did was made some dark swatches again on a separate piece of watercolor paper and I taped a black piece of paper over half of it and they are currently taped in my dining room window. Um, my window faces sun virtually all day with the direction I face. So it'll get lots of light and I will, um, if I remember, I'll uh, put it in the description box here in a couple of weeks or when, when I pull them down a month or so maybe to see how they've held up to the sun. I suspect colors like the bubblegum and the lavender and sky blue will probably completely disappear. The black might fade quite a bit too, but... I'm not going to say that for certain. I'm just basing it upon like how bright the bubblegum is in comparison to like opera pinks and things of that nature. But we'll see how it goes. So we're finishing off the pink and then I'm going to jump into the candied apple and start adding some red. Look at my head in the corner. Morning hair. It's like I do all of these in a messy bun and pajamas usually. <laughs> so yay for catching a glimpse of that oh i'm adding some of the sunshine to the center just to start working on the middle of the flower which was a mess and i'm not happy with i should have left it a brighter yellow but it works now starting in on the red and i'm just repeating the same process as i did with the pink and i am going to cover um probably all of the pink up with this red but i'm going in really dark and concentrated at the folds and where it tucks underneath of the flowers and then we're just going to blend that up and let it fade out. Sorry about the noise in the background. Um, the boyfriend came back. He forgot his insulin. So <laughs> that was kind of a priority. Anyway, so we're just adding, I'm adding it to like the folds at the top of the flower too and blending them out. I did find on this Arches paper. Now it could have been simply because I was using a water brush instead of water and like a paintbrush separately. But if I put too much of the concentrated color down, it dried into the paper really heavy and it didn't want to lift and move around very well after that. So if you're going to do this technique, I suggest working in small sections and blending it out fairly fast or you're going to end up with some of those hard lines and then you have to go back and add more color and 
really work to get them to blend out. That's not a bad thing and it's not a negative. It's just something to note that if you're going to try and go in and place a bunch of your dark colors and blend them up and out, you can't go through and do a whole bunch of it and blend it out like you can with some other brands of watercolors. So I would work, like I said, in small sections and just put that color down and then blend it out fairly fast. Um, I'm super happy with the way this flower turned out, you guys. It comes out absolutely gorgeous in the end. Once I add the purple and then a little bit of the black, the licorice color into um, the darkest points of the flower, this thing really comes to life. I do end up stamping a stem on it in a little bit here as well. But we're going to work on this red and getting this blended in and then other colors and super fun stuff. So it's, these watercolors are amazing. Like I'm, like I said, going, when I was going through, um, the swatching and stuff of all of these colors, I am super impressed with the colors they chose to give us to start with. Um, they, they lend you to be able to create basically anything you want to. You can mix some skin tones out of this. Um, you have, you know, your lime greens and your emo greens and your aquamarines, which you can mix together. Like if you add a little bit of that clementine to the emerald green, you're going to get more of like a sappy green color. You probably use sunshine as well, but I would use the clementine just because I like that orangey hue in my greens. Um, maybe a little bit of both if you had to, but you can mix lots of super fun colors and you've got a good base here and they've got, um... A good option for them expanding on this color line which fingers crossed we'll get more colors I would love to get more colors I would love to get like a deeper pink and more of an orange toned red which again is something you could mix yourself because you could add a little bit of orange to the red so that's why I'm really happy with this color palette is it's giving you um, a good amount of bases to be able to start um, to be able to paint anything with I would like to see, like, the lavender is a little um, lackluster for me. I would like to see a purple that got a little darker, more on, like, the dioxazine front, but if you're talking in, like, traditional artist-grade watercolors. But I'm, I'm happy with it in general. So you can see now I'm mixing, like, some of the brown into the yellow. Then I'm going to add some more of the uh, sky blue here just to put a little bit more variation into the background because I did find once I added that red that the blue kind of faded to the back and you couldn't really see it anymore. So that's why I like to work in layers and just slowly add things in and work on it. And it's just fun. It's, I had a good play with this flower. This flower was a really good, um, a really good choice for playing with these colors because there is lots of flowiness to the petals and lots of places where there needs to be shadows and highlights and all of that kind of fun stuff. So you can see now I'm going through and I'm starting to add in some of the purple here. Then I wasn't sure I liked it, but I was layering the red over top anyway. So I did just this little piece here. And then I was like, hmm, not sure how I feel about this, but let's, let's finish this section off and blend it out. I'm not going very far into the flower with the purple. And then I was like, hmm, let's paint over that with the red and see if I can hide it because I don't like the way the purple looks by itself. And now, like, I'm just kind of going through with the way my brain was thinking here. Well, then you can't hide that purple completely. So now I'm going to go through and I'm going to add purple everywhere and then red. So I'm just using a little bit of both. I didn't have to put the purple as, um, as particularly as I did with the red with where the, like, where the folds and the petals and that are. But I did make sure that I added it into all of the, like, I call them pinch points. It's kind of like where... Like I said, the petals go underneath another petal or they pull together with something layered over top and that kind of neat thing. So I put them, put it all in there and then um, layered the red over top virtually like right after. So I'm just kind of going back and forth and skipping it in some places and all of that kind of fun stuff. But we're making this flower a lot more red than pink. It just takes layers and patience. So it's, it's lots of just going back and forth and letting things dry and which is why the water brush was really nice because it doesn't, the, these Pentel water brushes don't kick out a whole ton of water for me, um, which is, makes me happy because some water brushes just like that water runs out of them. These ones I have to give it that little squeeze to get some water out of. This is the fine tip one. So I get a lot more control. So that little bit of water that I am putting onto the paper because it is so small and minute, um, 
the cotton watercolor paper is drying really fast with it so I can layer over top of it fairly quickly after it's done and I'm not having to leave things sit and dry for 20 minutes or a half an hour before I'm allowed to before I'm able to go back over top of that color or work on the petal directly next to it because nothing is embossed here this is just stamped in um, first fine onyx black ink so carrying on with the purple we're, we're getting kind of close to the end I think this is such a long video I feel so bad but I wanted to leave all of the painting in for you guys because it's super fun to um, see the entire thing come together and it is already sped up to four times its original speed so I don't think I want to make it any faster than that. So we're just going to sit here and chat. Aren't you guys excited to listen to me babble more about painting? <laughs> so you can see how when that purple goes in, how much cooler that flower looks. If you really like that look, I just wanted a, I wanted a red poppy is what I wanted. So, but if you really like that look, it does look really pretty in the cooler tones as well. It was just not the look I was after when I picked this flower to paint this time. So. I tend to do lots of my power poppy flowers in all sorts of random weird colors like I've done purple and teal and pink and all sorts of colors of sunflowers and I just really enjoy being able to make it whatever I want and it really doesn't matter what it's supposed to be. So adding some water back into that red paint there because it was starting to dry on the palette. Um, my palette here actually it's just a ceramic plate that I picked up at Dollarama here in Canada. I like ceramic plates for watercolor mixing and things because that stuff doesn't beat up on them and I like buying them at Dollarama because they're anywhere from like a dollar fifty to three dollars and if I break them it doesn't make my heart hurt so <laughs> I'm not exactly the most coordinated person in the entire world so but they work really well and they're a large enough size that you can do a fair bit of mixing on them before you need to clean anything up so just carrying our way around um these are fun. These are fun. I have the Hydrus watercolors as well, and I haven't used them enough. I should pull them out and do a video with them soon now that I'm kind of back into the watercoloring, watercolor kick here. I have a couple more um, palettes and sets to review and put up on the channel here for you guys, and just lots of videos coming, which is super exciting because I've been slacking lots lately and just like not filming and but part of that is because it's summer and I've been enjoying summer with my son so that's just the way the cookie crumbles but so you can see how I'm going back to certain areas here where those lines looked really really sharp or everything kind of felt like the same color and I thought it needed a little more definition um, and shadows put into those areas but we're getting close to the end I think I think oh anyway um, I am going to pull back out that stamp set and I am going to take the um, stem that comes in it and I'm going to stamp that onto the bottom here in just a couple minutes to kind of give it something to ground itself to. I was going to put this flower on its side initially and then I'm like, well, it looks kind of weird because it's got, if you can see the gap in between the petals at the bottom where obviously the stem is supposed to go. So I wasn't happy with not having a stem on there. So I'm just going to kind of, I have to bend it to fit the other way, but because they are clear stamps, you can do that kind of stuff, which makes everything a lot easier to manipulate when you're adding stems and leaves and you want them to point in a certain direction for your card. Cause I didn't want the stem to go off the side. So adding in a little more purple to the palette because I didn't have quite enough to put the shadows in everywhere I wanted them to be. Mixing up that red again. These re-wet really nice off of the palette. Once they dry on, I can get them moving and flowing just with a little bit of scrubbing and a little bit of water. I don't have to be really aggressive with my brush on the plate or anything to pick those colors up once they are dry and that's really nice. So here I'm adding in that stem and then I'm going to put some of that sky blue around it just so that it matches in with the rest of the background behind the flower. So all I'm doing is putting in drops of those color, drops of that color, and then I'm just taking the water brush and blending it all out. So I'm going with the key lime and then I'm taking this is the emerald green and dropping it in a few spots. And then a little bit of the brown just to give it some shadow. Key lime over top to blunt to yellow it back up because I, I really like yellow colors on yellow yellow greens on my leaves and uh, stems and things of that nature. 
So we're adding some more yellow and orange and stuff to the flower just to push it, or to flower center, just to push it back and darken it. And now I'm just going to take that black and put it in a few spots here for the petals that are, that are furthest pushed back, I guess. It's just what I think needs to have a little bit more shadow to give it a little more separation from the rest of the flower is kind of what I'm after. It's definitely a step you can completely skip, but I really liked, um, how much it brought that flower a little more life back into it. It just seemed to make the stamp lines a little more vivid again and stuff like that because I am washing so many colors over top of the stamping. So we're adding that in and then we just have to stamp on the sentiment, I do believe. Quit getting ahead of yourself, Jesse. Stab it. Stab it. I don't have any fun stories for you guys. Um, I do, I'll tell you about my water drama in the next video because that's fun and exciting. But anyway, carrying on with that black. I do really like these. If you guys are in the market for liquid watercolors or you want to try something a little bit different than tubes and cakes and stuff that we've been playing with now for years, I would definitely pick up the whole set or just a few of these. Just dabble your hand in. They're easily accessible. The price point on them is fantastic. They will all be linked in the description box below if you wanted to grab those. I'm just adding some of this sapphire blue in just to make that background a little more poppy and separate, not quite as light as that sky blue. So now we're going to add our congrats sentiment here and then that's it for this card. I'm going to put it onto a card base and that'll be the end. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and a little sneak peek into these watercolors a little more. Um, if you guys did like it, please give me a thumbs up. It does help out the channel greatly. If you aren't subscribed, I'd love for you to subscribe. I have more videos coming. Um, there will be one popping up on the screen here that YouTube recommends for you to watch. And my face will subscribe you to the channel. And I'll see you guys very soon. Bye for now.